Hey, my name is Levi, and in today's video, we are finishing this guitar. So it has been months in the making since I started this very project. It's taken three videos. This is the third of that whole series. This is the last one, and we're gonna finalize the entire refinishing process, build the guitar back together, and then I can finally show you what it turned out like. So just for a quick recap, in the first video, I removed all of the original finish from the guitar, leaving me with a bare wood blank. In the second video, I prepped and sprayed all the nitrocellulose. And after waiting a couple weeks for it to cure, part three picks up on the final sanding and polishing process. So let's go to the shed. All right, so here it is in all its glory, the unfinished repainted guitar. All right, so taking a look at the paint, and the paint looks even, but it's just not smooth yet. So this is where I gotta start sanding. I'm gonna start with P800 grit, and I'm going to wet sand this guitar. I'm gonna start with a sanding block and try my best to get this as flat as possible. So in order to wet sand this and not ruin anything, basically I've gotta apply a little bit of water, do a bit of sanding, and then wipe it off, just so the water doesn't get into any of the actual wood. We don't want that happening. Now after that pass, it feels really nice and smooth. All right, we're gonna start sanding the top to 800 grit. At this stage, my biggest fear is sanding through the finish, so I was really cautious, and I probably didn't sand enough at 800 grit before going up to 1000 and up. So if you're doing a similar project, make sure the surface is flat by holding it up to a light and looking at the reflection. All right, so my next step is to bring it up to 1000 grit, and it's about the same process, just a little bit finer. And I decided to hand sand at this point. That's not necessarily a requirement or anything. I just thought I could have a bit more of a delicate touch if I do it by hand compared to using the block sander. And the way the grits go up, at least in my project, are 1000, 1500, and then 2000. Now, if you're gonna hand polish this, I encourage you to find some P2500 sandpaper because that's gonna make the surface even smoother and flatter than it would if you were sanding to 2000. So I did most of this sanding in two main sessions, but after I was done, I looked at the guitar in the morning light and I ultimately wasn't happy with it. So I went back and I re-sanded the 1500 and 2000 grit again, and I ended up with a result that I was much happier with. However, it's not totally flat, like a mirror finish, although that's what I wanted. Basically, the surface ended up mostly flat, but it has all these little pores sunken in, and you can see that when you hold it up against light. Now, after working on the project this long, I was really antsy just to get it done, so I decided to make a compromise on the final sanding to where it looks good, on the wall, it looks good in my hands. However, if you look really closely, you can see all those little pits in the finish. And ultimately, this is one of those things that no one's really gonna care about. This level of detail is not easily shown in photo and video. So I figured it would be fine even if the finish had some pores in it. It still looks pretty good and the color is quite nice anyways. Now on to polishing. So way back when I started this project, I got a kit from Oxford Guitar Supply and I got the deluxe Nitro Refinish Kit and it came with some polish. There's a medium and a fine polish, so you're basically supposed to have two different stages of it. And I ended up using both like a guitar cleaning cloth like this, and I also use a microfiber cloth. However, I've got to admit, I don't have any actual polishing equipment, and I don't really have any experience buffing anything properly. So essentially, I just followed the instructions and did it to the best I could by hand, and it ended up okay. Essentially, you apply the product, spread it around, let it kind of dry, glaze up a little bit, and then you can go ahead and wipe it off and buff it. And once we're finished polishing, I can finally bring this into my house and start actually building it. Now my first order of business is taking the masking tape out of my bridge post holes and removing any masking tape that was left on the guitar. So then I go and find my box of hardware, find my neck plate and neck bolts, and finally reassemble the body and neck that have been apart for so long. We've got ourselves a guitar, ladies and gentlemen. Next up is wiring the guitar, which honestly, that could be a whole video in itself. I'm gonna keep it fairly short. I basically put new pots, a new jack, and I wired it just like the original with one volume and one tone and a pickup selector. I gotta say, wiring a guitar from scratch definitely helps you understand the whole circuit thoroughly because you have to touch every part of it rather than doing something like a pickup switch or a pot switch where you're just leaving most of the rest of the stuff intact. The guitar body has six holes running through it and that's where the strings actually go through because it's a string through body design. And when it came to reinstalling the ferrules on the top and the bottom of these holes, I found that the nitro finish had actually accumulated and caused the holes to get smaller. So I ended up having to 
drill those out by hand. I just took a drill bit and spun it. And anytime I did that sort of thing, it would make a little bit of a mess. So I clean it up with a vacuum. And once that was finally done, I could start restringing the guitar. Once I was finished reassembling the guitar, I decided to take it to a local luthier. I brought it to Strasden Instruments in Calgary and they leveled the frets for me because one, I don't really have the skills to do that at this stage. And two, the frets not being level was actually the whole reason why that guitar got abandoned. So now that it's complete, let's give it a look. So here it is, it's finally done. So we got the guitar in shell pink here. Um, you can kind of see, you know, the reflection of the, the light that we're working with here. You know, it's not exactly mirror finish, but I think it's pretty good considering the circumstance. If you want a mirror finish, you just gotta go further than what I did. I like the color, I like how it is. I like that kind of soft reflection it has. You can see the color, but you can't see the rest of the room in the guitar, which I think is fine. You know, it looks pretty good. I uh, got the maple fretboard and maple neck. I ordered some cheap locking tuners off Amazon from Music Lily, and we'll see how they turn out. They fit without modification, and they look like the original tuners. I think the original tuners had a nicer finish, but in this case, I like that locking functionality. One of the kind of fundamental flaws this guitar has is like the neck joint. Um, you can kind of see like the shadow there. Uh, I think that's actually from me removing material. If I remember correctly, this used to be flush, but yeah, after so much sanding to remove that finish, I think I took off a little bit too much here. And like the height of that neck. So that's the, the depth of the neck pocket. The guitar tech told me that I could actually take that neck pocket a little bit deeper as well. And that would make the whole guitar look better because like the bridge would be less high, the pickups would be less high and so on. Honestly, I'm happy with how it is just, just like this. It's not like a factory finish. It's kind of that like, you know, backyard kind of DIY project. It's not totally perfect but it definitely, you know, looks pretty good. It plays well, feels good. It's nice and lightweight. Because this is a fixed bridge guitar, no whammy. I'm just gonna keep this thing in like a low tuning. Right now it's in drop D, but I'll probably tune it down to drop C, maybe even drop B potentially. And it'll be my resident drop tune guitar because I don't have to worry about any of that floating bridge nonsense uh, as I do with some of my other guitars. Yeah, man. So there it is. That is my guitar refinish. It only took a year. But I'm sure if you tried this project, you could probably do it in less than a year if you have better weather than me. Like in Canada, we have like a solid four to six months of winter every single year. So it doesn't lend itself well to doing a project like this. But you know, if you live in a more temperate environment or if you have a good spot where you could spray, you could definitely knock a project like this out in a month if you worked really hard at it. But yeah, you know, that is my guitar refinish. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in and watching it. It's been quite a mission just to get this thing done and together. If you've enjoyed this series, I will encourage you to consider subscribing to my channel, leave a like, consider sharing this video with your friends, and maybe even take on your own guitar refinishing project and uh, tell me about it in the comments below. Anyways, that's all for this one. I'm gonna go record some riffs with this thing and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, y'all.